We don't want our children to be waiters waiting for us to die. Man who won a $22 million lottery says he hasn't told his kids, and Dave Ramsey loves it, and here's why. Which, by the way, I kind of love it too, because, like, technically speaking, you don't really have a responsibility to tell your kids that you won the lottery. But also, it's like, it really depends on how you have raised your kids. Like, if you raised your kids to be super like, psychologically sound, right, where they're not going to become, like, drug addicts or something, and they're responsible, then there's not really anything wrong with telling them that you want money, because they might already know about your finances if you have, like, an open discussion with them, like an adult, but let's get into it. So, a recent caller on The Ramsey Show claimed he hasn't even told his teenage children about his $22 million jackpot when two years ago. My wife and I made a conscious decision just to keep it under wraps, said the caller, who used the pseudonym John. We just don't want them to grow up to be waiters waiting for us to die. And the sad part is, like, depending on how you, like, how you raised your kids, right? If your kids are like a bunch of scumbags, that might be like a legitimate concern where they might just wait for you to die to try to get money. Which, by the way, you could prevent it from even happening by just creating a will where they're not tied to it. So that is an option, too. The comment made host Dave Ramsey burst into laughter, but John's decision was based on research he did following his big win. He learned that many lottery winners overspend and go bankrupt within a few years of hitting it big. One of the things they all say is they told too many people and had too many people turning up at their door asking for handouts, John said. And his approach to his windfall should keep his family in good financial shape going forward. Now, here's the thing. For example, let's say that I won $22 million, let's say after taxes to keep it simple, right? The way I would go about it is that I probably wouldn't necessarily tell many people as to like how much the actual amount is i just be like oh i made a bet it paid off right now in terms of like family i'd probably create like some sort of like fund where i invest the money where pretty much everyone that i care about gets basically like a monthly paycheck from that fund where no one can actually touch the fund and it just literally craps out a paycheck every single month to everyone that i care about including myself so it's basically like just um, added income to everyone that I would actually care about where they could do whatever they want with that money, but no one has access to the principal and whatnot. And many people don't necessarily have to do that, but to me, I want to take care of, care I want to take care of the people that I care about, right? So in a way, you could probably set that up because I know like um, for example, a lot of the like old school families of like insane wealth a lot of them are basically like basically almost all of their funds are held within a trust and the descendants of that family don't actually get access to the trust but the trust basically is operating on itself like operating itself with like different investments where it just literally gives them money every single month and I would probably do that to prevent the money from actually running out and could keep growing forever. Because you could probably set up a way for the $22 million to be invested in such a way that you would generate income of a decent amount without really worrying too much. Right? So I think, hold on. I think you could pretty much take take like 3% of like your investments forever and never really run out of money. So what, 3% of uh, 22 million is an income of $660,000 per year that you could pretty much take from that without ever running out of money. So you could easily structure that money because the taxes would be super low on this where depending on how many family members you got, depending on, like, you could probably structure it in a way where 
like you and your partner could get like a higher amount and then everyone else gets like a smaller amount. But basically it's almost like um, almost like a paycheck for like the basic necessities so that no one that you care about would have to worry about like paying bills to survive, right? So their home is covered, their health insurance is covered, their groceries are covered, and they don't got to worry about that. And if you could like set that up in a way for like people that you care about to be covered that way and never have to think about that I think that'd be such like an amazing thing to do now again not everyone thinks that way many people think more of a well I mean I want it so I should keep everything all that kind of stuff and there's nothing wrong with that it's just to me I like the idea of setting up a trust that could literally take care of everyone I care about in my life and that's the way that I would do it if I were to win a really nice size lottery. If I only won like $5 million, I probably wouldn't do that because I wouldn't be able to do that. I would only be able to really take care of myself in terms of like super passively with that type of money. But, well, and also be be like pay for like super like emergencies for like, like super close family members. But yeah, I mean, if I got like 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 million, I would set it up in a way where everyone I care about gets a check. So let's see, staying anonymous after a lottery win. Unfortunately, staying anonymous after winning the jackpot isn't always possible. Only a handful of states allow lottery winners to hide their identities upon claiming their prize, and some require you to win a minimum amount first. John, however, has managed to keep his winning status hidden from nearly everyone except his wife and one sibling. That puts the couple in a solid position to safeguard their new fortune. And to enhance his family's chances of keeping their lottery winnings, John says he hired a team to help him with investments. He and his wife also plan to live well within their means for the foreseeable future. And John says he is still working because he loves his job and his wife is happy to live in the same house they paid off a few years ago. We just paid cash for two Toyotas before we won this, John said. We're not looking to upgrade because they're perfectly fine cars. And Ramsey was impressed by the couple's financial discipline despite the tremendous windfall. I like everything you're doing, and it's not anyone else's business, he said, which I agree. It isn't anyone's business. And to be frank, I mean, depending on how much money I won and whatnot, would I necessarily tell my whole family that I won the lottery? No, probably not. But what I would probably do, again, for like the ones that I'm super close to, that I truly care about, I'd be like, hey, my fin- my financial situation has changed a little bit, and I am going to do this for you. Just don't really ask too many questions about it, but just understand that I love you, and I'm going to take care of you in this way, right? That's the way that I'd probably structure it. So Ramsey contrasted this situation with his own, although living in the spotlight and being known for financial advice made it difficult to keep his fortune a secret. However, he says his net worth wasn't disclosed to his children until they graduated college. I sat down with three of my kids and two of their spouses, five of them, and we started unpacking what our estate plan looks like because they're adults at that point. He said, I said, listen, here's the deal. Are you going to be productive and generous people, or are you going to be a waiter? Because if you're a waiter, you're not going to get access to any of this. And Ramsey said his goal was to impart to his children the importance of using wealth to maximize the good they could do in the world. And he had a similar message for John, who to this point has, by his own admission, been very tight with his newfound riches. I think you need to increase the enjoyment of this money and increase the generosity factor. Yeah, so like, again, I like what the guy's doing in this, but you should still spend money. You should still give money to things that you actually care about. And it doesn't necessarily have to be charities, because personally to me, I don't really trust charities. But let's say that you know someone, like a single mom, whose car just broke down, and it's the only car that she uses to take care of, like, you know, to take her kids to school right and she's not close to a bus stop you could without even letting her know that it's you be like an anonymous donation of like a like a few thousand dollars cash for her to go buy a car 
or you could literally just gift her a car, right? So like it's things like that, right? Where in terms of like gifting or giving. Now, in terms of like enjoying and whatnot, I mean, you got 22 million bucks. You could easily spend like a hundred grand a year for the rest of your life and not run out of money. Like, so think about that for a second. So you could definitely bump up your spending because there's really not much point to only collect money and not use any amount of it like at all. Like it literally doesn't make sense to like live that type of lifestyle. And this is coming from someone who really likes to save money, stockpile cash, etc. But you don't want to be in a situation where that is the only thing that you care about is just stockpiling cash because what's the point? Like you're going to die eventually. Let's see some of these comments. And by the way, give your thoughts as well. Let's see. They did this exactly right. The kids would tell their friends, who would tell their parents, who would tell their friends and siblings. And before you know it, everyone knows. And they'll all have their hand out. I don't okay the lottery much, but if I were to win big, I'd tell one sister and that's it. Both my boys are adults, but they're the type who would demand all of it since it's coming to us anyway. Should have seen the greed when my parents died and I inherited. Oof. Yeah, see, I really don't like that. Like, if you got kids that, like, have the mindset, like, oh, it's going to come to me anyways. Like, the hell it is. See, this person says, exactly what my wife and I will do if we ever win big. We'll keep it under wraps, even from the family. We'll help people, but first we'll help ourselves, especially trying to keep our existing relationships with friends and relatives. As soon as people know you have lots of money, everything changes. You are no longer a friend or a relative. You are a source of income. Strangers knock in your door with crazy requests and business investment proposals. People watch your steps closely, looking to get a windfall from your mistakes. My wife and I love to live in peace. We do not want to lose friends or cut ties with our family. We do not want to raise a spoiled child, like the article says, waiting for us to die just to get money. Money is not evil per se, but reveals the ugly part of people. There are plenty of stories around about divorces due to money issues and families broke apart due to inheritance fighting. If you're not careful with your windfall, it may be your undoing. Thanks. Yeah, I can understand that, right? I can understand that. That's why you got to be super careful. Like, for example, you shouldn't really be telling, like, friends of yours that you won the lottery. That is, like, incredibly foolish, right? Now, if they start to have, like, questions, like, hey, man, like, what's going on? Like, how do you have so much money? You could just be like, oh, I, like, bet on, like, a crypto and it, like, paid off nicely, right? Which is, like, different than, like, oh, I won the lottery. Because people might not really assume how much it is. But you could just say, like, I made enough to, like, have fun, right? But again, it's not really anyone's business. So keep that in mind, too. You don't got to tell no one. Cray up. Let's see. Oh, this is an interesting comment. So this person says, When I was a claims adjuster, I had a co-worker who was cool, but one day she was very visibly vexed, so I asked her what was wrong. Turns out she was upset at her 80-year-old parents for buying a new luxury car. I thought she was mad that they perhaps lacked mobile and coordination skills to operate the vehicle, but no. She was angry because, and I'm quoting here, why did they buy a new car, they don't need it, and they're spending my money. Absolutely blew my mind, Karen's at their finest. Yeah, see, like, that is, like, a sketchy thing. Like, if there's any remote, like, 
remote type of behavior like that of your kid, cut them out of the will, period. Like, make sure that they're not part of the will, period. Because that is just straight up entitlement. Okay. Feel free to give your thoughts. I just thought this was kind of an interesting thing. Because, like, how would you spend your money if you won $22 million? 